Hey y'all. Okay. It's about six o'clock Eastern here on Friday evening. And, uh, I wasn't going to do a video on this, but it seems like a bunch of you guys are asking me to kind of explain what's going on on the economic side of stuff. And what I want to talk about here is what's going on with the Suez Canal. All right. So the first thing I want to make sure everybody understands and pardon me for saying this, if you think, okay, why are you saying this? The Suez Canal is not near the United States. The Suez Canal basically is connecting the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean. Okay, so literally, this is going from roughly Saudi Arabia on the uh, the south side up toward like Spain on the uh, west side. Okay, that I means heading up this way. So yeah, it's going to affect what we can purchase in the stores. Absolutely. Uh, but I mean, it's, this isn't the, this isn't the Panama Canal. All right. So it's not trying to get stuff from, you know, Florida to California or whatever it is or anything like that. So first off, just so y'all understand the location of where this is. Now, it does not mean that uh, this isn't something that we need to be aware of because this is going to completely mess up the supply chain for a lot of stuff. I mean, we already know we've got food issues. We've got plastic shortages. I mean, you know, I'm, this doesn't have anything to do with ammo shortages or anything, but we all know there's a lot of shortages going on around here. And I've talked about earlier this week on one of the live streams about uh, semiconductors, microchips, and stuff like that, and those shortages. Well, here's the issue that you have with this, and this just gets keeps getting worse by the day, all right? So when you're talking about the Suez Canal, I mean, this is completely cutting off everything from going around Africa. I mean, and a trip through the Suez Canal is about 6,400 miles to go through the canal. And it, it'll take a ship two weeks to, to navigate through the whole canal, all right? If they have to go all the way around the southern tip of Africa, all right, now you're talking about 11,300 miles, and that takes three and a half weeks to get around, all right? So you're talking about nearly doubling the, the time it takes for those goods to go around. And so you know, people will think, okay, fine. You know, if I got to wait an extra week and a half for something or whatever, no big deal. That's not the problem. All right. The problem is, and this is where we've become so dependent on stuff made in not only China, but Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam. I mean, you know, go, go look at your, go in your closet and look at your wardrobe. Okay. On the tags. And you're going to see made in the Philippines, made in Vietnam, whatever it would be. So this is anything coming from Asia. Use, uses the Suez Canal to get product to Europe, to North America. Here's the issue. If you have to go around uh, Cape of Good Hope, down to the southern tip of South Africa, and it takes two weeks longer, well, here's the other problem. There's only so many shipping containers and ships. So if those ships are taking two, two weeks longer and those shipping containers are taking two weeks longer, there's nothing to get back. So now it starts snowballing. It takes two weeks longer to get to North America, then it takes another two weeks longer to get back to Asia. That's a month. Two weeks, two weeks, okay? So that's where you see that the shipping, uh, the uh, supply chain thing is going to make a total mess. Because again, walk into your local Walmart, pick up 10 items, Nine of them are made in China. Again, this is something to tell you how fragile our just-in-time delivery is. In order for just-in-time to, you know, there's two types of supply chain, just-in-time and just-in-case, okay? And we used to be with a just-in-case supply chain where stores would all, always keep stuff in the back and, you know, put it out on the shelves, you know, you get, 10 wheelbarrows on the shelf. Okay, well, we sold all 10 wheelbarrows. Great, we've got six more in the back. Let's bring them up. No, now the stores are in just in time. You got 10 wheelbarrows on the shelves and those are gone. It's gone. Okay, there isn't any more in the back. There's no just in case. So, you know, this is all the computers. Well, we sell on an average of X amount of wheelbarrows. So this is how many we're going to stock. And that's the way the stores keep inventory. This 
messes all that up because all that just in time stuff they were planning on. And again, I'm just using my example of wheelbarrows. Okay. We sold our 10 wheelbarrows and we get another shipment here in two days. <coughs> Problem is that shipment is now sitting outside the Suez Canal and it ain't coming. All right. Because supposedly there's about 300 cargo ships waiting to get through the, the canal right now which that backs everything up. Now, again, like I said, you're talking 14 days to navigate through the Suez Canal. You got all these ships backed up. Well, it's not like they get this, uh, what is it called? The Ever Given uh, Unbeached and everybody just goes, doo, 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 doo. no, okay. You know, think of the size of a cargo ship. These things don't move fast, all right? And they've got to meander through and you'll, you're 297th in line you may be waiting a week till it's your turn to start to navigate through the canal. And then, of course, everything happens. So this, you know, even though they're saying, oh, this is, uh, they're hoping to get the, the ship unblocked by next Wednesday, that's great. But how long is it going to be until the canal is back to regular uh, usage? Not including, is there any damage to the canal? I mean, you know, because this ship is basically... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dry, not dry docked, but, uh, you know, I mean, literally up on the banks of the, the canal, I mean, it could do damage to the depth or the girth or anything of the canal where another ship can't get through. And all you need to do is have this one get loose and another one get stuck. And now what do you have? Okay. So, you know, you know, I've heard people talk about, oh, we're going to have a toilet paper shortage or something like this. Okay. We don't get our toilet paper, for, you know, from, China, for the most part, most of our toilet paper, believe it or not, actually, the materials actually come from South America. So, you know, we're okay on the toilet paper. But things that, uh, there are there are paper products that we get uh, from China. There's, I mean, obviously going to Walmart, like I said, you get a ton of products in China. But, you know, supposedly a lot of the cargo that's waiting to go through the channel right now is frozen beef. Okay, that's got a lifespan, all right? And, you know, it eventually spoils, okay? Paper, like we said, all right? Beer, okay? Auto components. Talked about this a couple of weeks ago about not being able to get parts for a car when I went to the shop and what the guy at the mechanic was telling me, all right? Now if this stuff's all stuck, forget it. That's even longer to wait, okay? Chocolate, furniture, frozen pork, other things. Caterpillar has said that they've got uh, problems uh, getting parts for machinery. Okay. Now, granted, Caterpillar is not big in the uh, farming industry or whatever it would be, but I got to think if Caterpillar is getting most of their parts from China, so is John Deere and uh, Kubota and any of the other ones who are uh, making farm making farm machinery parts and oh gee now you get into the food supply issue and you know considering we're now at planting season for the farmers or anything you know if a part breaks oh gee you know it's not like they can go hey eh, you know what I'll just plant my corn next month okay it doesn't work that way so yeah this is a big problem that people aren't thinking about how literally big this could be because like I said it won't clear in a week. Just because they get this ship unmoored, there's the word I'm looking for. Uh, just because they get the ship unmoored, it doesn't mean, okay, everything's back to normal and go. You're talking about weeks, if not months, till every, the, till everything's back to normal. Because, you know, these ships are all scheduled. Okay, this is when you can get through the canal. There's, if there's 300 backed up, backed up and more every day, Sure, some are deciding to go around uh, the Horn of Africa, not a problem, but not all of them can. And so, you know, what is this going to do? Drive the prices of up, drive the prices of everything up. And you want to talk about one of the biggest ones that's all going to affect us? Like I said, where does the Suez Canal start? Saudi Arabia. What do we get from the Middle East, guys? Ah, what are we no longer energy independent in? Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, watch gas prices here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, because if there ain't no supply, there ain't no gasoline. Uh, so I hope y'all have taken my advice and filled up those five-gallon cans of gas. Because my bet is 
probably within a few days, you're going to start seeing the no gas signs up there again as people are all filled up and there's no trucks coming because there's no oil getting to the refinery to go. I mean, obviously it's not coming off of a, a freighter and going right to your gas station. It's got to get refined and all. But if the refineries, again, just in time, are getting that out as fast as possible and there's no crude to come back in to be refined, that's when we see the oil short or the gasoline shortage and that's what's coming. So I know you've probably seen a million videos on the Suez Canal. Uh, I apologize if I just bored the hell out of you, but I've had enough of you guys ask me what's going on over there. So I thought I'd put this one together for your Friday night enjoyment. Hey, what do you know? I promise tomorrow morning's video is a lot more prepping and a lot less economics. You'll, tomorrow morning's video is fun. So uh, I just finished recording it maybe about 45 minutes ago. So have a good Friday evening, guys. Pinball out.